So the first equation we are going to study as a model problem is so, the so-called convection diffusion equation, right? Uh, the equation is like partial u, partial t, plus a big U, which is a constant. Partial small u, partial x, is equal to a kappa, another constant, partial square u, partial x square, plus f. So let's look at all these terms one by one. First of all, we have partial differential equations, which means our, our solution, the solution which we are looking for by solving this equation, u, is a multivariate function. In this case, it's a function of x, the space, we call it, and t, the time. When we are taking partial derivatives, I hope everybody knows par what partial derivatives mean, right? We are fixing one variable and taking derivative with respect to the other variable. I mean, I mean a lot of people know what that, uh, know this definition, but like to truly understand its meaning, sometimes we still get confused. U is our solution. I'm going to say in each different application, U actually means different things. Right, I, I'm going to go through that one by one. So our solution, U is a, fun is a function of space time, and we have these partial derivatives. So for example, uh, I'm going to give a few examples. Let's start with uh, nuclear engineering, where you'll be solving uh, the, the, for the temperature of, let's say, your water, let's say, because water is uh, often used as a medium to carry the energy, starting from the cores where nuclear energy is generated to the, to the outside and used as a mechanical, engine, uh, mechanical energy. So, so let's say uh, I have the temperature of water. It's a function of space and time, right? It's a function of space because at every point it has a different temperature. It's a function of time because as time goes, the temperature at every point is also going to change. So in this case, we have the rate of change of the temperature as a function of time. So that rate of change is fixing in space. In, in other words, it's an alluring rate of change. Plus u times partial t partial x. This is because the water moves around, right? Uh, the, the water would be a terrible medium to conduct, uh, to, to, to transfer heat if it just uh, stays there, doesn't move. So the mo water actually convects, it moves around. This U, this term is what we call, some, some people call convection, some people call, call advection. This is uh, how the, this is the velocity locally of the water that the temperature gets, the heat gets moved around. The kappa here is the conduction of heat, right? Partial square t, partial x square. It's a diffusion. It's how heat gets conducted from one place to another. We are going to see that this term acts as an equalizer. If the temperature is high at one point, lower at a very nearby point, this term is going to smooth it out quickly or slowly, depending on the value of kappa. Plus F, so F is the source or sink of heat, right? For example, F would be positive uh, when you are very close to the core, where there may be a lot of radiation uh, that heats whatever uh, that is inside the, the medium. And uh, uh, so this whole thing governs the transfer of heat in nuclear engineering or in some other uh, physics, like in modeling climate and weather. The same temperature is going to be satisfying a very similar set of equations. Right. OK. So this is a, uh, this is a heat. Uh, heat transfer. All right, so let me give another example. Another example, let's say uh, you are concerned about the environment and you shoot, right? And let's, uh, one of the things 
we want to model in the environment is how pollutants and other chemical species like uh, uh, greenhouse gas gets transferred through the atmosphere. Okay, so for example, in this case, my variable would be C, right? C is the concentration of particular chemical species that of course is a function of space and also a function of time, right? Day night cycles, seasonality, all of this makes them non-constant. Yes? Um, so to go back to F, is it a, um, a function that depends, is it a function of temperature or activity, or is it a constant? It can be it can either. Be it can be either, right. So the, the thing that is important is that this term, F, is not going to be differentiated with respect to either X or T. So that's a, we'll call, what we call an algebraic term, right? So these are all differential terms. So F may depend on anything but in an algebraic way. So for example, it depends on the temperature locally, but doesn't depend on the gradient of temperature. All right. Uh, so. OK, so going back to our environmental engineering problem, our C is a function, it's a, is the concentration of a particular chemical species, is a function of space time. And how this concentration changes locally is also advected by the movement of the atmosphere, by wind, right? It's also diffused around and uh, uh, by, by the diffusion process of molecules. And uh, it is either generated by human or by some natural chemical reactions in the atmosphere. This F can also be negative because there are all kinds of things that takes away chemicals from the atmosphere. For example, if it rains, I mean the rain is going to bring things out of the atmosphere into the ocean or things like that. So this is a uh, uh, atmosphere transport. All right. Yes? Yeah, it's actually C there. Thank you. All right. So we are, and we can see we have two different applications looking at exactly the same equation. I mean, just uh, what you, you use to, uh, you used to represent. And yet, let's give another example that is a little bit different. So if you are not so concerned about the environment, you may work on petroleum engineering. <laughs> and you may want to say, OK, how much oil can I drive out of a, a reservoir right? by using water? I mean, one of the surprising things I learned is that if you, if you just drill a hole, oil is going to come out. But only like 10% of oil is going to come out. 90% is going to be stuck under the ground. So what people do nowadays is they drill multiple wells. Some of the wells they call production wells. They produce oil. Some of the wells they call injection wells. They actually inject water and some other crazy stuff into these wells <laughs> to drive more oil out of these production wells. So in this case, you have this. Uh, uh, let me call H as a function of x and time. That is, how much, how, what percentage of the fluid underneath is oil? What percentage is actually water or some other things you, you, you use to drive out? So let's say H is the percentage of, uh, uh, of oil, right? Some people also use percentage of oil and percentage of uh, 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 gas being different percentage. But they, are, they, are, uh, they satisfy approximately a similar type of equations how the oil percentage changes as, as a function of time is equal to uh, a, a plus the advection, which is how fast or how slow the water uh, and oil mixture is going to move. Right? To solve for you, you need a, another set of equations, uh, Darcy's law or, or whatever. But like after you solve for this u, you get uh, this set of equations. So that is going to help you that is going to help you figure out if I inject water over here and over here, after a while, how much oil can I get out of the ground? And F here is going to be basically, um, it's only going to be non-zero where you have wells. 
Okay. And uh, uh, this equation has helped, uh, helped people enormously in figuring out where I should actually drill the wells. Because if you drill, it, depending on where you drill the well, you can solve these equations. The solution is going to be different, right? You can either get more oil or less oil out of the same reservoir, which is a lot of difference in the amount of money they make. Right, so so this is uh, uh, in in uh, in reservoir engineering, reservoir engineering. Okay. One, the last example I'm going to say is even more different. What? Oh my God. <laughs> 